Two members of the Western Massachusetts legislative delegation have recently unenrolled from their respective political parties. State Representative Suzanne Whips left the Republican Party late last year, and last week, State Representative Solomon Goldstein Rose chose to leave the Democratic Party. Both were invited to discuss their decisions on Connecting Point. Goldstein Rose accepted that invitation. I've always acted nonpartisanly in the way I approach politics. The issues I've focused on, climate change is my top priority. It is not defined by any particular ideology and in, in practice used to cut across party lines and has become so polarized at the national level that it's prevented any action happening on the most urgent issue of our time. So I, me and I think many of my generation have grown up in this time where we've seen increasing polarization and the, the extremity of now Trump getting elected as a symptom of the two-party system and the gridlock and dysfunction at the national level. And so trying to show that you can be effective in politics without being partisan, trying to embody simply that spirit that I've always tried to bring to my political work uh, in letter as well as in spirit uh, with my registration. So State Representative Ellen Story held your seat for 24 years yeah. prior to your uh, most recent election. And she has come out and said that she was disappointed in your decision to unenroll and, and register as an independent voter. What would you say to voters who elected you to this seat who feel deceived by your decision to disenroll from the Democratic Party? So this is exactly in line with what I campaigned on. I campaigned on challenging business as usual politics. And this is one of many ways that I've been doing that. And among other ways are the bold policy proposals that I have introduced. Uh, I've worked on most recently this tax swap idea to lower the sales tax and put in a carbon pollution price. Uh, I've gotten, uh, for the very first time in Massachusetts history, a carbon pricing bill that has support and co-sponsorship by members of both political parties um, and now no party. And so I have been challenging uh, people's assumptions when you talk about carbon pricing, people have assumptions going along with that, and, and depending on how they identify in terms of political ideology, some have connotations that are quite positive or quite negative. And I introduced an energy jobs bill that talks about more comprehensively, how do we make Massachusetts the Silicon Valley of the new energy economy? Obviously, we, to do that, we need to do these pieces, and people get that. And I talked with business associations that had previously been totally uninterested in this kind of policy that said, yeah, this makes sense, and, and are starting to be open-minded towards that. So similarly with party, people have associations if there's a D or an R next to your name, and people certainly will be surprised by the, the U or the I next to someone's name uh, who chooses not to affiliate with a party, but they can't make any particular assumption about that. that. That means they have to really engage with the system. And one of my top priorities has been civic engagement, civic education, and getting people involved and connected to government systems. And so this is a way to further that as well. So you're 24 years old. You're yeah. currently one of the youngest members of the state legislature. When you were elected, you said you wanted to work to engage voters who are your age and younger in the system. Have you found that people who are 18 to 24 don't, don't align with a particular political party? Yes, if you look at voter data, on average, young people are uh, 18 to 29, almost 10% more likely to be unenrolled than enrolled in a party than the oldest cohort in Massachusetts. Uh, on average, though, Massachusetts as a whole, 55% of voters are not enrolled in any political party. Uh, so this is a, a spirit that we already have in this state, and we certainly act in the legislature in a somewhat nonpartisan way in the way we legislate. So I'm saying, essentially, why shouldn't we be one of the first states to make that true in, in letter as well as in spirit, in our election laws, in our registrations, in the influence we have on the rest of the country? Because we have this great potential. You're talking about engaging young people. My whole generation, as I said, has grown up in this time. We've seen only at the national level dysfunction, increasing polarization and gridlock. And people have started to unengage with the political system itself. 18 to 29 year olds are at an all time low for voter turnout in, in that cohort of uh, that age group in American history. And so to start getting big things done so that we can show government systems work and get people of all ages to re-engage and believe in those systems again, uh, that's what we need to be focusing on. And Massachusetts could be a, a, the leader of all states in that. Let's talk about some of the issues that you think you're going to focus on moving forward now. 
that you think that being an unenrolled candidate will, will help you? Where are some areas that you intend to really now focus on that maybe being a Democrat you thought was getting in the way? Being a Democrat doesn't get in the way in Massachusetts, but so I, I would I would. But maybe I know in the spirit of working with the yeah. few Republicans that are elected yes, there, at there the are state level. That, that I have already gotten more traction by being nonpartisan registered, such as? Um, such as the tax swap proposal that I mentioned earlier. So the idea of this is there's the sales tax ballot question to lower the sales tax. It would lose the state a billion dollars of revenue per year and that would be detrimental to our budget. At the same time, lowering the sales tax is a nice idea because we want to support our retail businesses. And so I've proposed let's do it in a, a way where we lower the sales tax, put in a carbon pollution price, which is beneficial in itself, and make up the revenue that way. You calibrate it so that there's just enough excess of carbon pricing revenue to invest to mitigate the regressivity. Both of those are, are regressive forms of raising revenue. Um, and uh, other than that, you make up the revenue. And you could do this so that you eliminate the sales tax over time and have a significant uh, high price on carbon pollution that would drive our economy towards clean energy, improve public health, and keep more money in state because we're spending $20 billion a year on fossil fuels from out of state, um, whereas the sales tax, if we lowered that, that's providing in-state sales. So this is, has double benefits uh, to the economy. That's something that is completely nonpartisan in, in ideology and spirit and has gotten interest from members of both party uh, parties in the legislature and from business associations and nonprofit advocacy groups and has gotten increased interest from some of those players uh, since I made this move and have been able to talk with them more effectively.